Well, hello scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Now, I've been doing some uh, pyrometallurgy experiments and trying to do some propelling over in my foundry furnace. And, well, it's not ideal for that. It gets way too hot and there's not enough oxygen in there for propelling. Everybody keeps telling me I need an electric furnace for this. Okay. Everybody keeps telling me that, but I don't think they're looking at the price tag on those things, especially these days, post you know, inflation explosion, they're pretty darn pricey. So, well, I'm saving my nickels and dimes, and one or two of you have contributed toward the possibility of me getting one. Rick, I'm looking at you. Thank you very much, buddy. Um, but I'm also looking at the possibility of building one. So, yeah, that's a possibility, too. So I'm uh, looking at uh, all the junk I've collected. You know, I've got kilns out back I use for various things. And I've got a lot of kiln bricks, good kiln bricks here in this box. And I'm wondering if I could build my own furnace using kiln parts and some other stuff I've got laying around. So I think that's what I'm going to try and do. You know, it, uh, it doesn't look that difficult, really. I've looked at a couple of home-built furnaces online, and I think I can do it. So uh, let me start unpacking this box, and uh, we'll see if I've got some of the parts I need. I'm sure I'm going to have to order a bunch, but I'm betting the price tag is going to come in way below buying a newer used furnace. So let me get to unpacking. So let's just see what we've got in this box here. It's been in storage for a while. Haven't had to do any kiln repairs for a while. Here's a K23 kiln brick, and I know I have another box with some of these in it. I must have put this one in here just because it didn't fit in the other box. Here is a, that's a couple of spare coils for my kilns. Now these I think are going to be too big, too long, much too long. And these are for 220 volts as well. I want to build a furnace that's going to run off 120 volts, so I will probably need to uh, wind my own coils, I think, rather than try and reuse these. Set that aside over there. We got, yeah, these are, these are the kind of bricks I was thinking I had. These are for like octagonal or 10 or 12 sided kilns. They've got sort of a bevel on the, on the ends, but they've got channels for coils in them. So yeah, I've got, uh, got quite a few of those in there. I've got some of these. They're kind of broken, but I think I can cut them and glue them together or mortar them together. Oh yeah, I've got... Here's another one of these. Oh, here! There's a crossover brick where the ends of the coils go through here and then they would come and cross over. So you'd have something like that. Coil would come around, back up, and you'd have something like that on this side. Yeah, I think I can make something out of this stuff. I think I've got enough kiln bricks. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few more down in here. And I know I've got some more of these. So yeah, the only thing I'm a little worried about is these things are all very, very soft and fragile, and they kind of dissolve if anything molten falls on them. So I may need to buy some um, some tougher bricks for the base of the thing. But I think for the sides and the top, I've got bricks that'll work. I think so. So I'm going to have to get bricks for the bottom. I'm going to have to get um, some wire, some resistance wire I can wind into coils. I'm going to have to build a coiling jig. And I'm going to have to buy some stuff to hold it all together, like maybe some angle. Um, some slotted angle would be better. Um, I'm going to need um, a temperature controller, a thermocouple, and um, probably a solid state relay for turning the coils on and off. So yeah, I guess I need to go shopping, but uh, I think I've got most of the structure here in all my kiln bricks. 
So, and my K23 bricks. So I think I'm good. Okay, I'm going to go shopping for the other stuff I need. Well, I guess it's time to go shopping. So I'm on Amazon here. Here's the uh, resistance wire that Jeremy recommended. So I'll get 50 feet of that. Okay. And uh, let's see what else do I need. Okay, here's some furnace cement. I've used this brand before and it works pretty well. So I will get a tub of this stuff. So here's the uh, temperature controller that Jeremy recommended. It comes with a uh, thermocouple and a solid state relay and a heat sink for the solid state relay. So I will get this. What else do I need? Okay, I don't have quite enough fire brick to build this thing, so I'm going to get some of these. These should be good for the base. Uh, most of the fire brick I'm going to use to build this is pretty soft and I know the base is going to take the brunt of the abuse so these are going to be much harder firmer bricks so I'll use these for the base of the furnace and here's some slotted angle um, I can use this for the legs of the furnace I can use it for uh, up the corners of it around the corners of it underneath it for support so yeah, this stuff's pretty handy for building like a skeletal framework around the uh, the furnace to hold it all together and take the, the abuse that I don't want the soft bricks to have to take when it uh, gets moved around and put into storage and stuff. So I will get three or four of these. And uh, yeah, I have to think about anything else I might need. I'll probably have to go shopping again in the future, but this is a good start right here. What we have here is sort of a mock-up or early engineering study of a potential compelling oven I'm going to build. I've started sort of uh, putting some ideas together. Uh, this one would be on top, and the coil would come in, go down one side, back up, across, down the other side, back up, and then out and it's not going to have a very large capacity of course but uh, hey it doesn't really need to and of course I've got these things stacked vertical I don't know it might be better to do them horizontal so that's a possibility too and these bricks uh, they're beveled for use in like a uh, 10 or 12 sided kiln I'm gonna have to cut them off square and knock out some of the uh, the webbing here so that the coil can cross over but that's not really a problem I've got some cement for cementing it all together I might double up the layers on the bottom I've got some thin uh, fire bricks on the bottom I might double up the layer there just for a little insulation better insulation so uh, and um, I'll need to come up with Eh, I probably got enough bricks uh, besides this one on top I'll need some others skinny ones like these so let me rearrange this and see how it looks with the coils horizontal that might actually work better that would get the heat closer to the sample which would be sitting here so let me try that yeah, I'm not sure about going horizontal. Um, I'm going to have to cut a lot off of this one brick here. And yeah, things don't fit together quite as well. So I'm thinking vertical is probably better. Alright. Let me look at that again. Okay, yeah, I like the vertical better. Everything fits together a little better in the vertical orientation. Of course, I'll cut everything nice and square and cement it all together nice and flush. It's just all rough fit together now with, with rough beveled blocks. Uh, doubled up the base. Um, yeah, I think this is going to work. Yeah. All right. So I will need to cut the blocks to fit and then cement them all together. Um, I'm going to build a base to sit this on. It's going to be elevated up off of whatever surface it's on because you know, this will probably get quite hot on the bottom eventually if they're running for a while. Um, 
I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a uh, angle angle iron frame all around it with legs down and give it at least like four inches off of whatever it's sitting on. I need to figure out how I'm going to make a door for on the front of it. Um, I've got some ideas in that department. So, all right, I think I can build my own capelling furnace. Everybody tells me I need an electric capelling furnace, okay? Um, most people don't realize how expensive they are when they're telling me that. A few people do. And one person, Rick Brock, has actually donated towards the project. So I think he's earned the naming rights for this oven once it's done. You know, it'll be the Rick Brock Memorial Capelling Furnace or something like that, unless he comes up with a better name for it. We'll go with his name if he comes up with a better one. I'll start cutting the blocks and putting this thing all together nice and see what I can make here. Oh look, the Amazon man has brought some more parts for the furnace. Let's see what we got here. This is the temperature controller right here. Okay, that's the um, solid state relay that's going to turn the, uh, the heating element on and off under the control of the temperature controller. That's a mounting bracket for the controller. That's a thermocouple. Uh, up good up to 600 C. I may replace this with, uh, let's see, it's type K. I may replace this with one of my type K kiln thermocouples, which is good for a whole lot hotter than that, which we're going to need for the inside of the furnace I'm building. But okay, we got some parts arriving that we're going to need to get this thing operational. So that's good. Waiting on some other parts before I can do much else, though. But at least we are on the way. Well, here's another piece of the puzzle just delivered. My resistance wire. Yeah. Canthal A1 annealed. All right. So now I need to make a winding jig, a coil winding jig, so I can wind my coils. Doesn't look too difficult. I've seen some that other people have made, so I will get to work on that. Well, it looks like the Amazon man just delivered another piece of the puzzle here, this long box. Been waiting on this for quite a while. It's kind of lost in the mail for a while. I was afraid I was going to have to ask for a refund and reorder. But, uh, finally arrived. Here they are. Slotted angle. Perfect. Cut this up into the links I need and uh, fold it together or even weld it maybe. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. But, uh, here we go. Three foot, four foot sections of slotted angle. And these should work good. I'll just cut them um, probably about 16 inches long. The furnace will be about this tall. There'll be a little bit of leg underneath to hold it up off of whatever table I've got it on. Perfect. Just hold the corners together. I can cut smaller pieces to go around the top and bottom. Hold it all together. Perfect. Alright. So I think I've got pretty much everything I need now to get started on building the furnace. So I guess I had better do that. So I think uh, that's a good place to end this video and we'll pick up in part two when I actually start construction of the thing. And we'll see how far along I get. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching this video. If you found it all interesting, educational, informative, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos, including building this furnace. And check out uh, my second channel, Electric Geek 64. Uh, good stuff there. If you're at all interested in electronics or retro computing, check that out. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.